This is a really good question and something that um, I think a lot of us wonder, which is, does male testosterone decline as we age? What diet and lifestyle interventions can be done to help the situation? And it's pretty important that um, it's certainly something that we all feel as we get older, that, you know, you just weren't, you didn't have a lot of the characteristics of high testosterone from when you were 15, N namely sex drive, acne, um, rate of facial hair growth, that kind of thing, when you were 15 compared to when you're older. And we often think, is that because testosterone is declining or is it just that puberty is over or whatever? Now, there are some diet and lifestyle interventions you can do. And the bad news is testosterone does indeed decline as you get older. But all is not lost. So I'm going to move that down there. And yeah, so first of all, testosterone does decline with age. This is a typical picture of how much it declines by. You can see here that um, when you're kind of 25 to 34, your average is like 600 nanograms per mil. As you get older, uh, 35 to 44, it's about the same, but then it does start to dip, especially when you're 45 or older. Personally, I think um, I've felt effects of dropping testosterone, even though so I'm only 28, but I've noticed a difference from when I was 18, especially recovery capacity and training volume ability to handle that. Maybe because I've got a more stressful life now than I did back then, so um, that always opens up work capacity. But um, let me know guys in the comments if there's anything that um, you have noticed yourself as you got older um, in terms of testosterone, then uh, if, you've, if you've seen that with age or if that's been any change. Now there are variations within normal range so the normal range is between 300 and 900 nanograms per mil. And where you are within that normal range does actually affect your body composition. So if you're at the high end of normal, you're going to be leaner, you're going to have more muscle than if you're at the low level. So even just bringing yourself up within the normal range is going to be helpful. And the problem there is that the normal range clinically means that nothing's going to be done about it because no one's going to... Um, you go to a doctor and they're like, well, you're normal, even if you're on the low end of normal, there's no clinical justification for boosting or, you know, putting you on testosterone replacement therapy or anything like that. As for whether you need testosterone replacement therapy, it's better to cover your bases first. Do the things that are within your control that don't make you reliant on some external um, drug or external factor. And then later on, if you're still within, if you're still low end of normal or below the normal, then maybe it's time to seek help. And you can get blood tests online if you're really concerned about this, but I'm not really uh, wanting to go in that direction because I had a long chat with someone who is on TRT and talks about his experience with that. So that's going to come out in a couple of weeks on the podcast. Anyway, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll include the links to all of these articles as well. So you can see the you can see the research for yourself and look at specifically how much these factors affect testosterone. Now, here's the good news. Very good news. Now, resistance training restores, doesn't just maintain, but it actually restores that muscle sex steroid hormone steroidogenesis in older men. So if you see these comparisons here, these are three hormones. So DHEA, uh, pre-testosterone and DHT, all different variations of androgens, essentially. <coughs> now, young, um, pre pre-training, so um, there's the, the natural levels of testosterone when they're young, and the old levels of natural testosterone. Now, after training, it brings it up almost to what the young levels are, so that's fantastic. And the similar trend happens with free testosterone and DHT. So there's a lot you can do just by resistance training to improve at least the muscle um, concentrations of androgens, so that's pretty good. Now, as far as application overall, there are a few things that you can do. First thing is lift. So as I've said, lifting three to four times a week, maintaining good body composition, heavy lifting so that you are effect getting effectively this effect, so restoring the muscle sex steroid uh, hormone release. Avoid prolonged endurance training. So marathon running, Ironman stuff, long runs, anything over 5K, 10K, 
<clears throat> is not going to have a positive effect on your testosterone. And if it's if you're already fighting an uphill battle, um, then you've got to weigh up. Like, do you really want to do that endurance stuff? Is there a competitive gain that you get from it, or are you just kind of doing it because that's what you feel like you're supposed to do? Cardio in general for young people does increase DHEA and sex hormone binding globulin. So DHEA is dihydroepiandrosterone. It's another androgen. Um, but it doesn't have that same effect in old people. So cardio is not an effective way for you to restore your testosterone. Lifting is. Again, the study is here if you want to check it out and I'll send you the links. Sleep is another one. So this is a correlation. Again, it's not causation, but it's, it's you know, I'm not going to, um, the, the, the two options are either um, testosterone causes you to sleep longer or sleep increases your testosterone. And again, I think it's more likely that <clears throat> sleeping longer improves your testosterone. And there's a pretty, pretty hard relationship between low sleep and low test and high sleep and high test up to about seven or eight hours a night. So that's another thing that you can do. Not everyone has that luxury, but doing that is going to certainly um, put you in the higher chances of improving your testosterone. Supplements. So the three that come to mind outside of pro-hormones or any kind of actively testosterone boosting thing, which I think have their own risks, are ZMA, probiotics, and things to reduce your cortisol. So that would include something like phosphatidyl serine, um, lycopene, and inositol. All three of those are in a, a blend by Mind Nutrition called Neurochill. I used to take it. I haven't had it for a while, but it's it's certainly a good supplement. I, I might buy some more actually once, once I get some more cash. Anyway, uh, probiotics again, something that um, if you have disrupted my gut microbiota, that might start affecting baseline levels of cortisol. Cortisol and testosterone work in antagonism to each other. It's like a seesaw. High testosterone means low cortisol. Low, low cortisol means high testosterone. Uh, yeah, other way around. So. Managing that and uh, it is going to improve or it's going to increase your chances of improving testosterone. ZMA is zinc and magnesium. These, if you are deficient in them, will reduce the amount of testosterone that you can produce. So pretty important to make sure that that is uh, that that is you're not deficient in those things. Cholesterol. Next thing. <coughs> So people are quite afraid of cholesterol because of the potential cardiovascular disease risk factor. Now, the evidence that's coming out is that dietary cholesterol <clears throat> is really poorly correlated with blood cholesterol. The main thing that's going to affect your blood cholesterol and triglycerides is how fat you are as a person and if you have any familial predisposition to that. So if you have a family history of high cholesterol or you have familial hypercholesterolemia, you might have heard it is labelled as, then that's something that you need to seek medical treatment for and ask your doctor as to whether increasing your dietary cholesterol is going to be a risk or not for you. Because if you have a genetic problem, you're going to process cholesterol differently to the average person. If you are a normal person, <coughs> I'm really losing my voice here, uh, if you're a normal person and you don't have any cholesterol problems, then eating more eggs, more dietary cholesterol is not going to be a bad thing. Eggs have around 200 milligrams of, t of cholesterol in them, which is much higher than any of the other sources of, um, of meat and butter and that kind of thing, which are also moderate um, amounts. Better to get your cholesterol from eggs than trans fats and that kind of thing. So that's one thing. And if you want to see more on the anabolic effects of cholesterol, Basically, it's a building block for testosterone, but check out this article from Menno Henselman's absolutely fantastic, and it just talks about how helpful it is as a pathway for building muscle. Um, I've certainly found a correlation between morning wood and eating more eggs, so something worth trying yourself. Minimise your time in a deficit as well, so the longer you spend dieting, the more your testosterone will tank, and it won't always guarantee to return to normal levels. So bear that in mind, don't spend half your life dieting. Get lean once and for all and then eat a moderate surplus. Don't go through these bulk cut cycles. 
that's going to cause you a major problem. Uh, minimize stress. Uh, one thing I should mention as well, didn't, didn't mention it here, on the body composition note, is high body fat will increase estrogen. Fat actually produces estrogen in itself. And so if you're over 15% consistently, then that's going to disrupt your hormones. It's going to hamper your ability to gain muscle. So that plus not spending so much time in a deficit, just getting lean once and for all, it's the answer to this stuff. Being around 10% body fat is the, the living the dream, really, on all fronts. Because you look your best, you feel your best, hormones are working properly, you're not so lean that you're hungry all the time and, and experiencing the reduction in testosterone from being too lean. It's just great. So if you have given up on a diet in the past or you want to you want to finally put a nail in the coffin to the 10% thing, just power through, get down to 10% body fat and you will be a happy man. Um, it, it's much easier to maintain that as well without hampering muscle gains as well. So 10% is like full abs, lean. Minimizing stress, the next factor. So meditation, it's a, a very helpful approach. If you are not into meditation, then doing some kind of progressive muscle relaxation approach um, or just any kind of way to unwind, it could be walking, um, anything you can do to reduce your cortisol on a chronic and a long-term level is going to be helpful. Dive into social situations. Now, why am I saying this? about testosterone, it's that some studies have shown that learning to lower your social features are actually helpful for elevating your testosterone. Generally, when people enter a socially judgmental situation, testosterone is elevated afterwards, but really more so in those that have lower baseline cortisol. And the way to reduce your stress that you get from social situations is to expose yourself to it frequently until it's no longer a stress. And this kind of makes sense if you think on the evolutionary point of view that the, the most alpha males were the ones that could step into social situations and handle it with no, with no fear and no anxiety. And so the best way to do that is to repeatedly expose yourself to it until it doesn't cause a problem for you anymore. That, plus reducing your stress, plus lifting, plus eggs, plus sleeping more, imagine what's that, what that's going to do for how you feel and your testosterone levels, especially as you're aging. And so really there's no, there's no reason that it has to um, decline. What's a good indicator? Morning wood. So I mentioned this before, waking up with an erection is a very quick and dirty way to see whether things are all firing at, at full speed. Kelly Starrett says, if you're having a good poo every day and you wake up with an erection, things are probably going okay in your body and so you can even tr test some of these things that i said above so try under sleeping see if you wake up with an erection or not try sleeping seven or eight hours try minimizing your stress try meditating a lot over a week and see what the frequency of morning wood does um zma take it before bed see what happens in the morning see if you have to sleep on your front or you have to sleep on your back um so yeah these are all some things to try out. If you're interested in this and this has piqued your, your interest, check out the more information here. So alcohol and testosterone, I'll put the links in the cheat sheet. So that talks specifically about how alcohol affects it. Interview with this guy who was on TRT, really fascinating and goes through a very uh, candid uh, experience of what he, what he went through. Training and how to adapt it for the aging gentleman or mature lady. Uh, is it worth getting blood tests for performance? So here are our views on that. And also, does the type of training that you do impact testosterone, i.e. within uh, within lifting, does higher or lower reps and so on, does that affect testosterone? Check out all of them if you're interested and let me know. I'm going to hang around for a minute or so. Uh, okay, so Aidan has said, uh, what about ashwagandha? Ashwagandha, I think it does have an effect on androgens from what I remember. Um, it's certainly worth trying. Like, I looked into it myself and I think as far as downsides go, it's not, there's nothing so far in the evidence that says it's a, it's a bad choice. If anyone wants to know 
um, more about ashwagandha, I'm going to quickly link to something that you can check out. Um, let's switch to Chrome. Examine.com, for anyone that wants to look up anything about supplements, it is a beautiful resource. They've basically taken a summary of all of the um, data on different supplements and put it together in a very evidence-based way. So, yeah, it, it may increase testosterone, but it's more about the benefits for fertility, testicular health, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, notable reduction in anxiety. And so, mechanistically speaking, you'd think that it would reduce test it would improve testosterone by reducing cortisol. So, it's feasible that it could. Um, and what this what examine.com does is it gives you a, a, an evidence hierarchy. So this says strong evidence, three studies, quality research and consistent results. And it's such a great way to just like if you just pressured on time, like, look, is this supplement a waste of time? Is it bullshit or is it good? You can check it out and it just is very useful. So, yeah, reductions in cortisol, reductions in inflammation. To be honest, it increases in power output, like eat, whether you're interested in testosterone or not. A lot of the effects are very similar, aren't they? I think, Aiden, you might have just sold me on getting some ashwagandha myself. I'll do a trial on it and I'll um, I'll record some experiences if anyone's on the fence. Thanks, Siri. Just my web search turns something. Just miss hearing me, and then when I want Siri, doesn't listen. Such a little bastard. Um, cool. So yeah, ashwagandha. Just from a quick look at examine. Seems like a thumbs up from me.